So the most requested video is here. Galaxy Note 20 Ultra real life battery drain test and before I even begin I almost didn't want to include the iPhone 11 Pro Max because 60 hertz versus all the 120 hertz lads on the table but then I remember 60 hertz will also be present on the iPhone 12 so we just have to deal with it I guess. As always all devices are fully charged, brightness on optimal levels, disconnecting the cables and here we go. As always starting off with the social media stage kicking off Instagram and uh, like I said this is my favorite social media addiction application you can say we're gonna be using this for almost one hour and uh, it's uh, kind of a nice standard usage time for most people I guess now all the Android phones on the table are set to 120 Hertz the Chinese sisters on the table OnePlus 8 Pro and the Oppo Find X2 Pro both of these two devices can do 120 Hertz at quad HD which Samsung boys can now do even with the adaptive refresh rate. Speaking of adaptive refresh rate, Samsung says that this is the VRR OLED screen on the Note 20 Ultra and is said to be around 22% power efficient. Is it gonna make any difference? We shall see. Here are the battery percentage after an hour of Instagram and uh, wow, it didn't even scratch the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Overall, for the 120Hz phone standard, I would say pretty nice values. Jumping next into the Facebook application, another big social media app that people use. I don't personally use it that much, but let's check out what an hour of FB will do to these bad boys. Alright, so the iPhone is still comfortably sitting on its lead, not that big, but still it is ahead and we have the Chinese sisters doing a little bit better than Sammy boys so far. Of course, we still have a lot more things to do, so things can change. Moving on to Twitter, this might very well be the least power hungry social media app, trying to play videos and see how it's gonna affect. So post Twitter battery percentages and pretty much not a big change so I'm actually impressed overall from all the phones especially the 120 hertz phones because they all have fairly good battery percentages for a 3 hour social media usage. But it's time to take things to the next level with some gaming and I'm going to be playing 3 different kinds of games starting with the low level temple run definitely a very addictive game but not that demanding. It didn't even do that much to the battery percentage, roughly around 4 to 5% lost. But jumping straight to the power hungry, super popular PUBG game, and right off the bat, I can tell we have a major difference. For the first time, I'm including PUBG in my test. It's not only high end, but it's also an online game, so. All of that will affect this usage. I'm aiming for 40 to 45 minutes of PUBG session. And uh, while we are at it, a quick look at the battery sizes. The S20 Ultra being the biggest with the 5000 mAh battery. Whereas the iPhone is coming with a 4000 mAh cell. Uh, the smallest of course on the table. Very interesting scenario indeed. You have to give Apple a little credit. They definitely do their optimization really really good. Now post PUBG battery percentages and oh my god what a drain. All the phones took a massive drain piss. PUBG really is a big battery drainer. The S20 Ultra is leading the 120Hz phones. Uh, once again, the 5000 mAh battery is starting to make a quick difference here early on. While other 120Hz phones are kind of on the same level, so far I've not really seen the potential of the LTPO from the Note 20 Ultra. Now we still have 30 to 35 minutes of gaming session left, so I'm going to be playing GTA San Andreas on all the phones. Okay, so post gaming stage and the difference between the S20 Ultra and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it's getting closer and closer. I have to say it's, it's definitely becoming a lot more interesting now. But things can massively change because we have the most important stage coming up, which is the two hour of YouTube video playback. Now, if you look at the design, all these phones are super amazing, beautiful. We have a bunch of design on pretty much any major Android modern flagship phone. The iPhone right now is probably the only flagship to stick with a notch. All these phones are having bright OLED displays so really it's a treat looking at these screens. So 2 hours of YouTube totally toast all these phones, still iPhone is on the top. The Note 20 Ultra hasn't really shown off its LTPO advantage like I said. Everything is around the same line as the 120Hz. Find X2 Pro and the OnePlus 8 Pro. The S20 Ultra is doing slightly better and that's mainly because of its big battery size. Now time for a Penta Geekbench 5 benchmark test. Now I know it's not very realistic, you won't be doing benchmarks on daily basis, but just to put the pressure 
on the CPU, absolutely pushing everything to the max and see how much it's gonna drain the battery. Now, while I was doing this test, the S20 Ultra was considerably hotter compared to other flagships on the table. Even the Note 20 Ultra felt more normal. Also, if you look at the scores, there is actually a huge difference between the 865 devices and the Apple A13. I'm sure the 865 Plus version of the Note 20 Ultra uh, will be able to better bring the performance to a next level. And now it's finally time to do the camera test recording till death. We're actually going to be doing 4K 30 FPS on all these phones. Let's see how long they can go. All right, guys, so the winner is the iPhone 11 Pro Max, clocking in almost nine hours and 20 minutes of usage. I mean, this phone recorded an extra 45 minutes of 4K footage compared to all these phones on the table. But of course, there is a 60 years display, and considering that, I would actually love to lose some battery percentage in exchange for a higher refresh rate display. So, so in that kind of higher refresh rate sense, the OnePlus 8 Pro tops the charts with eight hours and 37 minutes of usage. Very, very impressive indeed. Indeed. Then we have the Sammy Boys, 8 hour 26 minute on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and 8 hour 28 minutes on the S20 Ultra, literally just a minute of difference between these two phones. The new adaptive refresh rate might get a lot better with softer updates, but right now it's almost matching the 5000 mAh battery powered Galaxy S20 Ultra, but at the same time, both of these two smartphones kind of lost to OnePlus 8 Pro, so as of now, I can't really see any major difference with the latest adaptive refresh rate. And lastly, the Find X2 Pro coming at eight hours, 21 minutes. A very respectable time indeed. It's also got the fastest wired charging coming at 65 watts. So all in all, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, while it is a 60 Hertz display, I will have to say that the software optimization is really good as well, which is one of the reasons that it came on top. As for the 120 Hertz Android phones, they all are doing really good, fairly in the same kind of bracket. But anyone who's buying a 2020 flagship, they should absolutely pay attention to the higher refresh rate it really does make a lot of difference as always let me know your thoughts in the comment section below uh, this took a lot of time to make so i'll really appreciate if you can smash that like button and also do not forget to subscribe because a lot more videos are coming regarding the note 20 ultra i'm just getting started and uh, yeah see you guys in the next one peace out